Hi, I'm George Cow, and today I'm with Christelle Arcucci. I'm excited for us to talk about the, the very important topic of money and how, we're, how we are relating to money in our mind and heart and, and how that, of course, um, ripples out and into our own financial lives and, and beyond that. So, hi, Christelle. Thanks for having this conversation with me. Hey, George, I'm super excited to be here with you. Thank you. Yeah. So let me first read your bio to everybody and then we'll get going. And I just want everyone to know Christelle has been a student of several of my courses. And I thought that, you know, she has a message that might be uh, encouraging and uh, inspiring for some of you here. So, all right. So Christelle is the founder of Soul Purpose Network. She is a soul purpose mentor, healer, writer, artist, and speaker. Christelle is passionate about empowering women to be seen, heard, and financially supported and aligned with their soul purpose. She has supported thousands of clients to align the body, mind, and soul purpose since 1991. So, um, Christelle, one of the things, you know, the, there's so many things you could, you work with clients on, and one of the things is the relationship that they have to money. So, I'll let you kind of take it over from there. Okay, great. And this is a tricky topic because a lot of people in our community don't want to talk about money and, you know, so much of the programming, especially in spiritual communities or artist communities, that money is evil. And I think, unfortunately, that's because there are so many businesses that are using money as a vehicle for destruction. And they are using money and business in a way that's not in the highest alignment. So the first thing is that looking at our relationship with money, being present with where we are with it right now, and also seeing the possibility of utilizing money as a force for good. So it's always good to come up with examples of businesses that are doing this, that we can look to and say, okay, here's an example. You know, like a couple of people that pop to mind for me are Oprah, right? She's sharing her message and using her platform and, and money in a way that is creating powerful change. You know, I think the same of Richard Branson, you know, a global leader that is doing business in integrity. So it's so important that we look to those businesses instead of focus on just the businesses that are using money in corrupt, greedy, awful ways, you know, to be like, money is neutral, right? Often people talk about money as energy. And I would go even further to say is money is fuel. So money can fuel the vehicle of greed and corruption. Or money can fuel the vehicle and be a force for good and powerful transformation in the world. And so I want to set up that context because so many people in our community are like, oh, I don't want to talk about money. I wish I didn't have to deal with money. I wish I didn't have to sell anything. I just want to change the world. And so in the current paradigm, we money is an important thing and essential for most of us that are doing business, right? We have to be willing to spend money and make money to even be in business. So I wanna set that context that we are looking at money at, at money as fuel and we get to choose, is it a force of good or is it a force and fuel for evil and corruption? And from my perspective, the more people and business owners we have making conscious choices with their money and building conscious, sustainable businesses, the more quickly we're going to be able to turn this earth ship around. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like this idea of money as fuel because, um, you know, to me, it's like primarily when we make money, it's not that we are trying to get the money itself, that, that, but it's like we're, we're, we want what the money can do. You know, just like the fuel analogy, money allows the, the, the vehicle, the car to go, you know, farther and to, to operate. Um, money allows our vision to, to go much farther. And similar, another thing about money is fuel is interesting. Like we can't, we, we don't want to drink fuel. <laughs> we'll die. Um, and so we can't eat money either. But it's like, again, it's like, it's like the, I think, I think when, when, the, when greed comes in, when we got some money, it's like people focus, hyper focus on the money itself. And they forget about the people, they forget about the vision, they forget about the values. And it's like, wait, 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 are we just drinking fuel here? No, no, we just want the fuel to do the thing that it's supposed to do, which is take care of people, take care of planet, you know, take care of our, take care of the future, right? Yes, yes. 
So that's the place we're setting up that context. And then the next piece is so important is uh, to get present with our relationship with money. And in doing this, I work with clients in supporting them in thinking about money now as a person. So when I first started doing this with my, this building this relationship, building a healthy, sustainable relationship with money, the dominant feeling I had about money was fear. So if I think about, okay, money is now a person. And if I was continually saying to that person, I'm afraid of you. You're never there when I need you. I don't trust you. You never do anything good for me. You know, if I was saying this to a person, that person wouldn't stick around very long. Like they wouldn't want to help me. <laughs> right. If I was constantly projecting my fear onto this person, it would, they would be, they'd take some steps back and be like, okay. So, and when you first begin to recognize your present moment relationship with money, is to do it without blaming, shaming, make yourself wrong. You know, is to think of, okay, I'm working to heal a relationship, and just like in healing a relationship with a person, it's first like, okay, where are we now? And, and where do we wanna be? we need to first be focused on like what the experience is. You know, often we, we vilify money again. And so it's like kind of clearing the slate and being like, okay, money is neutral. It's my relationship with money, which most often comes from our parents' relationship with money and our culture's relationship with money. So it's like clearing the slate after we've figured out, okay, my dominant relationship with money was fear, where it was like, I would be afraid of opening my bills. I would be afraid of not having enough money. I was afraid of having money too. So it wasn't just the fear of not having money. It was like the fear of doing awful things with money because I had, I've seen so many businesses and uh, I was about to say politicians, but I'll just say it. Politicians do things with money that I didn't agree with and I didn't align with. So I was like, I just don't want to deal with it. But then as I first recognized what my relationship was, and then I said, I am going to focus on building a relationship with money that's aligned with the greater good, that's aligned with sustainability of the planet, and to do business from that place. Yeah, it's beautiful. Exactly. Yeah. It's, um, you know, fear is... Uh, essentially about avoiding right and so when we approach that kind of relationship to money it's well, we're avoiding it money and of course now money is going to avoid us so yeah thank you very much for that for that reframe mm -hmm. yeah so then in that shift of recognizing our relationship with money and then looking to shift our relationship with money find first you know we've we've pardoned money and been like okay it's been the humans using money that have created the problem it's not money itself and then it's important to then shift to how do we shift our experience of money? So it's easy to just be like, well, how am I going to do that? It's so ingrained in everything I do. So one of the practices I work with clients on is a very fun practice. And George, I hope you would do this with me. It is the money mantra. And so mantra is a repetition of a certain word. And so with this practice, we're incorporating, it's a breathing practice, it's a sounding practice, it's a movement practice. And so basically what we do in the practice, and I'm laughing already because you can see that I've done this enough that it's already shifting me even before I teach it. And also people find this very funny, this practice. So what we do is we take a deep inhale, and then as we exhale, we repeat the word money over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And ideally you're moving your body and, 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 and also notice what your mind says about that. Because most, most people that have a spiritual practice, they're like, I can't say money over again, because again, we have made uh, money the enemy. But what if money is just fuel? So me repeating the word money and having an experience in my body that's funny and fun and playful and is simply energy 
then we have a chance of being able to be like, okay, my relationship with money can be fun and playful and be a source of good in the world. So would you do this with me, George? All right, let's go for it. Okay, so we're gonna take a deep inhale. And then as you exhale, you're just gonna repeat the word money, 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 um, who have ingrained this idea of that money is evil, you know, they, they repeat it and it's like, oh, I can't, I can't talk. It's, it's a dirty thing. Money's dirty. But I think um, I, I, I've, ha I've, you know, greatly reformed my relationship with money over the years. And uh, that's in part why I think my business is able to, to work well. And it, it is, it's true. It's kind of like if we were to think about another tool, like, um, like a vase, for example, I'm looking at a vase of flowers and it's like, I don't have a, I don't, I have a neutral relationship with a vase. When it's useful, it's gorgeous. It's wonderful. And when it's not, it's just sitting there, you know, it's like vase, face, 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 face. It's not, you know, it's like, right. It's the same. It's, it's, so that's an interesting thought. It's that, you know, it's, it's a, it's a tool. And if you, if you're repeating it and you can't, you can't do it in a fun way, it's like, uh, there's something there, you know, for us to, for us to transform. Yeah. Right. And it highlights that practice highlights most people's resistance to the word, which then mm. means they're resistant to money, yeah. which makes it so that it's going to be difficult for them to make money. Yeah. If you're yeah. resisting money, then how is it going to come to you easily? Right. Well, I think, I think if you're resisting money, I think what happens is we subconsciously sabotage our efforts to make money. I think that's really where, where it happens. It's like, oh, uh, I'm, I'm scared of saying what my rate is to my client. You know, oh, I'll give them a discount or, um, Oh, I want to do this thing, but I want to create an online course. But uh, you know, someone says I should charge for it. But nah, maybe I'll just give it, you know, give it at a discount or for free. So yeah, it is. It's it's a it's an interesting um, exercise. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you for playing with me. So the the next thing that we work on, I call future casting. So mm -hmm. once we've looked at our relationship with money, where we are. We've begun to do the work of, of seeing money as fuel and, and committing ourselves to using money as a force for good in the world. Then we future cast, which is like we're creating the future from here and now. And in that process, helping the practitioners in our community like put their stake in the ground to say, I take a stand for this one global problem that my business also supports people to transform on a personal level. Like for example, my, my one global problem that I could wave my magic wand and wipe out would be, I would make it so that every woman and girl on the planet has a way to make money in her local economy that feels good to her. And when I first really landed on that, I was afraid because I was like, oh, are people going to think I'm a man hater or are they going to be like, what about men? Or, you know, there's all this blah, blah, blah chatter in my mouth, in my mind. And um, yet when it, it's so true for my business, but at first I was really scared to take a stand for that. And and then I was introduced to Lynn Twist's work. She wrote a book called The Soul of Money, and she talks about the same thing. And so then I was like, okay, here's a relief. Here's a woman who's creating massive change, and she's also talking about the same, like how that would change the planet. And it's also a ripple effect because I also really deeply care about the environment. I care about people getting fresh water and having medicine when they need it. And, you know, there's so many things I care about, you know, cleaning the oceans. And, and so I think that's also a challenge people in our community come up against is they're like, well, I don't, there's so many things I want to change. But for me, it's like when I take a stand for women and girls being able to financially support themselves in a way that feels good to them, then they can make choices in their local environment and they can then fuel the causes that they believe in which means it's going to create a massive ripple effect in many areas of life and that in my opinion happens for everyone and and what they do um, 
So I'm going to give another example. And then George, I would love to know if you, if one comes to mind for you, if you would share like what your one global problem is that you would shift and, uh, and, and then you can share it. So uh, for example, one of my clients, she's a Qigong teacher and a performer and has been doing it for 40 years. And, and, but there were like these two, she was an amazing performer and speaker. And we were in a speaking program together and I knew she was a, a highly trained Qigong teacher. And so she had these energy practices, but then when she was on stage, she was so exceptional. And she and I were in a, a speaking program together and I was like, I want you to teach me how to do that, right? How to tell my story in an embodied way that captivates the audience. So then with us working together and her taking a stand and bringing those things together, her focus is in supporting women to share their message on stage and through storytelling to make a positive impact in the world. And so in her taking that stand, now her programs are sold out. And then she's again, supporting people and getting their message out, which is, it's like the ripple effect of positive change in the world. So George, would, is, does one come to mind for you? Gosh, you're, there's so many, <laughs> yes. but like if I'm imagining, okay. Um, you know, one of the, one of the challenges I, I see in the world is um, uh, that politicians are, are being bought and sold, right? And uh, if I had in a, like, if I had unlimited money, I would give everyone, um, it's actually, a, there's actually a policy called democracy dollars, which is, um, you know, it's like, imagine giving everybody a hundred dollars a year where they can, um, they politicians can say, you know, that, that money can only be given to political campaigns. And so what happens is that washes out all the lobbying money because, you know, it's like in a community of, a million people or a or, or thousand people, um, what is that? That's $100,000 right there. Or I'm sorry, community, 100,000 people, that's you know, $10 million right there. And so um, anyway, so if I had a bunch of money, I would uh, change the political system so that's really citizen, uh, citizen funded. So um, yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah. Right. And, and our viewers can see how that one change that George would make the impact that would have, right? Mm -hmm. That would impact our education system. It would, it would impact the prison systems. It would yes. impact, you know, funding for so many things. And yeah. so I encourage all of our viewers to really look at that, like by taking a stand for that one thing and saying, I'm going to use money as a force for good, how it creates this ripple effect and also supports other people to stand in their power and to stand for their cause and yeah. you know and then we create this global network of people who are doing business in a conscious way using money as a vehicle and a force for good in the world yeah that's awesome thank you for for that uh that inspiring exercise and i hope that those who are those who have something like that if you have a future cast you, you if you have abundant money what would you support or what would you uh help to create Feel free to comment below and let us know if you get inspired by, by seeing those comments. So um, there's so much more, uh, Christelle, that you could share with us, um, but I know that you have something that you want to you want to share with the audience in terms of an offer that how they can continue uh, doing the work with you. Yes. So I have a free course that's called the Mystic Money Jumpstart. So it it goes deeper into these principles of looking at your relationship with money, giving you practices to help you shift your relationship with money, and also deepening the relationship with money that you want to have. So seeing money as an ally um, in, in your life, and then going deeper into how you can create that change so that when you're in that place of power with money and in your business, then you attract clients and opportunities that support your vision and your mission-driven business. So I would love to invite your viewers, our community to come to my website and sign up for that free course to go deeper into these practices. And then if that's a good fit, they can set up a conversation to explore how I could support them further. Awesome. And I will make sure the link uh, to that is in the notes of the video. So be sure to check that out. It's a free course and it comes with like audio. Tell us what's, what, what, what they get. So with that, yes, there's audios and journaling exercises to, uh, so the audios, there's a couple audios and one is a journey to meet your mystic money ally, 
Um, so it, it goes deeper into that embodied practice of, of money being an ally in your world. And then journaling practices to help you first recognize your money blocks and then reset them. So, so that's a, a deeper way to go into these practices. Cool. Great. Well, I look forward to um, some of you actually doing this and please comment below if, uh, once you get the course and, and how it uh, helps you. I'd love to see that. So thank you so much, Christelle. Is there anything you. Um, sort of you want to send us off with any other encouragement or insight? The main encouragement I want to give everybody is to trust yourself with in your relationship with money trust that you will use money as a force for good in the world because right now from my perspective we're in a global crisis and we need as many conscious spiritual people and business owners taking a stand and using money in alignment with the highest good of all mm, it's beautiful thank you so much christelle thank you it was a pleasure to be with you and your community today yeah, thank you for uplifting us about this important topic. Thanks.